welcome back to the final episode of CCTV at Chemical Near Americas 2020. With today an interview on supply chain disruption, a statement on chemical compliance in China and we will say farewell to Benjamin Franklin. But first some sound bites from our sessions on Asia Pacific. We had an excellent session on regulations around chemical control in the Asia Pacific region. We heard from speakers from Japan, Korea, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, and across all of those jurisdictions and countries, we're seeing a rapid proliferation of chemical control regulations and tons of change, whether it's brand new regulation or amendments to existing regulation. So companies need to be keeping up with the region. They need to be aware of those changes so they can keep their products compliant and safe on those markets. Well, I'm glad to have this opportunity today to present about regulations and the challenges industry face in many parts of Asia Pacific. This is a region where economically as well as chemical regulation wise is fast developing and as well as sustainability related regulations. So we had um, a lot of talk about what's happening in Thailand, in Vietnam, even touch a little bit on India, as well as uh, the challenges industry face under Cambridge. So I'm glad to be able to bring that a lot of this information to the North America population and so the audience. Russian inventorization process of chemicals has started, so if Russia is an important market for you, don't miss the opportunity to submit your data. The deadline is 1st of July this year. After that, uh, you have to go for full registration, which is a costly and monthly exercise. It is free and not complicated, so just do it. Interesting to see all these developments in Asia, a location never visited by Benjamin Franklin, who besides living in America, spent many years in Europe, especially London and Paris, from which he wrote many letters to America. Most of them were mailed, but some he never intended to send. They were sometimes leaked as part of a negotiation strategy. More on trade and negotiations later in this bulletin. But first we connect with Mr. Franklin in front of a Philadelphian post office and take a closer look at its impact on the postal system. Good day, sir. Oh, good day, Jeard. This is a representation of a colonial oh. post office. I'm informed that this is the only United States post office that does not fly an American flag because there was no American flag when I was first made postmaster general. In your time as postmaster, you made many improvements to the postal system. Can you recall some of them? Well, as a result of a postal inspection tour in the mid-1750s, I was able to greatly increase the efficiency of mail delivery. Mail from New York to Philadelphia now uh, took half the time as a result of relay teams that carried the mail between those two cities. I am also informed that the United States now has 40,000 post offices that carry as much as 200 billion pieces of mail each year. Oh, that's quite an achievement. Do you know that nowadays we send about 300 billion emails per day? Emails are electronic mails and they're often sent with smartphones. Here, have a look. A smartphone combines a lot of what you, Benjamin Franklin, stand for in one device. You can use it to call the fire department, it's battery operated, you can send mail with it or read newspapers, and some even try to influence politics with it via Twitter. This blue bird is the logo of Twitter. It's Larry the Bird, a very famous basketball player who played for the Boston Celtics. Boston, of course, where you were born. And all of this you can search for and read on a smartphone, which in essence is also a kind of library. Something I'm sure you can appreciate as founder of America's first library. And in a library there's probably a lot of information on supply chain disruption. But for a first impression on this topic you can also watch today's interview. Can you define supply chain disruption and the consequences of such a disruption? Rather than focus on supply chain disruption, let's just talk about why supply chains exist. Supply chains exist because companies want to move goods uh, as quickly as possible uh, in the most cost-effective way possible through a country, through a region, uh, really across the entire world. Uh, we live in an era of trying to find where competitive advantage exists and sometimes companies say, I'm going to be able to make this component, this intermediate input in one market uh, better than I can make it in another market. I can use this supplier, this supplier is going to meet my needs better than another supplier in another market. So we, we've gotten to the point where uh, technology, data, all this helps us move goods and services efficiently and that ends up benefiting the consumer uh, at the end of the day more than anything else because it's an, it's an efficient approach. Unless it's disrupted. Unless it's disrupted. So 
what are the factors that can disrupt a supply chain? You could have natural disasters, you could have policy, you could have tariffs, for example. Robert, are the companies aware of their complete supply chain and potential weakest links within that chain? So it's important for the manufacturers to do a um, uh, supply chain assessment to find out where their vulnerabilities are and their critical points and to assure that uh, uh, they have maybe secondary sourcing or they have uh, other means to get the product to where it needs to go. Okay, and are we able to manage and de-risk such a disruption? Um, those companies that take a proactive approach, yes. So um, if they do their due diligence and um, do their EH&S compliance auditing of their suppliers to make sure that they're in compliance with the local regulations. Please watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel or in China on our Youku channel. Let's connect with Rainbow Zhang of Intertech in China for our statement of the day. Hi Rainbow, how is life at the moment in Shanghai? Hi Jared, the city is more and more getting back to normal. While people are still suggested to stay more time at home, and uh, wearing mask is needed when we visit public places. It seems like a balancing act between containing the coronavirus and restarting business. On a different level, can we expect revisions of the chemical control legislation in China that industry should be aware of? Although some of the authority experts and officials are involved in on-site support of the virus control work, the regulation revision is still expected to be available in the middle or second half of the year. So far, there's no signal of any delays. And your statement is? Reduced data requirement and simpler application procedure will lead to a more time and cost effective model of chemical compliance in China. Thank you, Rainbow. All the best. And I really hope to see you soon at ChemCon Europe 2020 in October. Time to say farewell to Benjamin Franklin. He just sends me a text message that he wants to show us his invention that gave him the greatest personal satisfaction. Mr. Franklin, tell us more about this invention. During my time in London, uh, it became a very popular pastime for musicians to play music upon uh, wine glasses. Uh, the wine glass was filled to a certain level, which would determine the note, and they would wet their finger and run it around the rim of the glass, creating a very interesting noise. I um, thought I can improve upon this, so I had a glass blower friend of mine make 34 glass bowls ranging in size from 3 inches to 9 inches in diameter. Each one was tuned to a different musical note, and they had a hole cut in the middle. By pumping a, uh, a foot pedal, uh, quite like a uh, spinning wheel of my day, I can get the glasses to rotate around. By wetting my fingers, I could play various notes on the bowls. Each one was color-coded to show the type of uh, note that it would play. Thank you for your contributions this week. Can you play something on it for us as a farewell? From Philadelphia, it's Benjamin Franklin for CCTV. Now it's time for the focus of the day. Today we focus on the developments in the China region, like the Taiwanese legal framework and the revisions of Order 7 in China. Furthermore, we take a closer look into the impact of trade tensions between the USA and China on industry. After this educational Chemical in the Americas 2020 in Philadelphia, I'm sure we all agree with Benjamin Franklin. We are all born ignorant, but it is hard to remain stupid. A big thank you for all the speakers and thank you for watching. It was our privilege again sharing all this news with you this week. We hope you like it and we look forward to seeing you at ChemCon Europe 2020 in London.